So we are in Girona, Spain, or just outside of Girona, Spain at the PGA golf course. We are setting up for the team time trial practice. The whole entire squad is here. The whole entire staff is here. There's a whole lot that goes into preparation for the team time trial, not just on the rider side, but also on the staff side in terms of equipment, in terms of supplies, in terms of setup, in terms of getting all the trainers out together and all these riders out on the road at the same time. Today's workout is basically three efforts. They're gonna be fairly short efforts, but very intense. And basically what the riders are gonna suss out is how they, you know, effectively skills and drills, how they're gonna coordinate with one another, what order, what position, what kind of speeds they can hold, who's gonna take X long pull, etc. Remember all the things that we've practiced. So it's hands down at the back, a nice clear signal when you're changing. And how hard are we going, Pete? Race pace. Race pace. Yeah. For me, the main thing we want to do today is like I almost want there to be some mistakes and we want to like, iron out some of the things that, that could go wrong on race day and get them fixed here. So we obviously need to go a certain speed to almost put people into the red to, to make them like suffer and make them make them get things wrong because it's easy when we're doing 80% efforts to get the communication right, do the signals right, make the change right, but then obviously when you're going 60k an hour it's a lot more difficult so Ali Mike Ali 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 come on it's 70k an hour come on uh, come on these guys have a really, really steep learning curve. Um, they're all really, really powerful. They just need to work out the kinks, and that's what the next two days are for. Uh, we get certain opportunities at certain times of year to practice together. Uh, luckily, a lot of the guys on EF, Education First, live in Girona for most of the year. So we're able to kind of meet at service course and get on the TT bikes and run some drills. We've done that a few times throughout the year, so I think we probably get more practice than than most teams at this discipline. Many of these riders have already done team time trials together, but not this specific eight. So in many ways, this is a brand new experience for all of these riders. How'd it go? Yeah. It hasn't started yet. We're doing race seven now. How do you feel today? Oh yeah, not bad. It's good in the heat. It's like home. How hard it is. It's perfect. Even though um, you know the, they're all highly experienced riders, the, the the tightness, the proximity of the team time trial, especially in the aero bars, is really really intense. And so them just getting familiar with it and getting coordinated is the main goal for today. Uh, on the radio, I'm going to talk like I would in a race, so with the same terminology. So if you guys do the same thing and the same gestures as we've agreed. So that means you're going to skip a turn, right? That means you're going to come back in. I'm going to tell you if we're missing anybody how many we're rotating in. So we're rotating in seven or six or whatever. I'll say change, right? If you need to make a change at the front that it's coming, it's bunching up in the back. Uh, I'll say shorter turns, faster turns, all that normal stuff. But even though it's going to sound like a race, we're still on open roads, right? So we're going to keep it safe. From the first effort to the second, uh, it was quite a big difference. Uh, and that's just the main goal, trying to improve. A lot of us, you know, maybe have never done a team time show with each other, so it's just kind of learning uh, how we all fit in, uh, how we're all riding, or how we all ride technique-wise, and uh, just trying to help each other get the best possible result for the team. There's really two efforts. Uh, that you have to make with each turn of a team time trial. There's the effort you do on the front and the effort you do to get back on the back. Um, if you miss getting back in that slipstream even by one meter, you're gonna be gone because you can't close that meter. That surge to get back on, I think that's, that's underestimated because that's uh, oftentimes harder than the pull itself. So when these guys are going full tilt, it can be really, really hard for them to communicate. There's gonna be, I think, a lot of chaos initially in the first few efforts, but it's all about communication. It's all about talking to one another. So a lot of the communication is done from the car. However, if you're in the line and you feel it's slowing up in front of you, you will shout change, which then is the person on the front gets off. But we try and keep the communications between the riders really short and simple. There's only about three commands that they will give each other. They will do change, the person on the front, ease if it's too hard, and they'll shout wait if someone, a designated rider, maybe we have two or three guys that we might wait for, if it's our GC man, for example, then it will be like wait, which basically means stop. You 
you've got you had a camera on TJ Van Gardering. It has his power output, his cadence, his speed. Yep. TJ was doing about 450, 480 on the front. Yeah. So we He's will drop down to 300 and then speed up again. Yeah. And we don't like a 600 peak in the end. He did have a nice transition though, especially as we saw that last rider. And you see a, a big difference. And also depends on the type of rider. Yeah. If you got a sprint type, it's not a problem to push for five seconds, uh, 800 watts. Yeah. But like the endurance based riders won't like that. Yeah, it's not a good circle. Like for Mike Woods, it's not a good thing, right? Yeah, no. As a rider, you're not paying attention to all the details uh, we can see from the car or from the camera. Yeah. You're just focusing on the wheel in front yeah. of you. Yeah. So, on purpose, we have done some short turns in front, yeah. which makes it a bit more difficult to yeah. get it really smooth. You're trying to force mistakes. Yeah, and, right. Yeah. And that's so critical. Because and they make them. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and eliminate them because yeah. if you don't, if you don't test the system, if you don't try to crack the system now. If you have three strong riders and you tell them go 40 seconds in front, yeah, it will roll really smooth. Yeah. And we don't want to see that in training. Yeah, yeah, you want to push the envelope a little bit. Yeah. There's still a couple of things that uh, we need to get dialed maybe as far as, you know, the order, but I think as far as pacing and as far as how smooth we ride together, I think I think we're really we're really there. To get eight riders to to ride like one and to leave their egos at the door and to all fully commit and all be kind of aware of what their strengths and weaknesses are is a, it's a hard thing to have all come together. I think we'll be one of the favorites for the Tour de France stage two. Uh, you know, we're in there with a shot. Obviously the measure of success in the team time trial is speed, but what's really interesting about any great team time trial is that you don't need the strongest team to get the fastest speed. You need the most cohesive team. You need the most well-coordinated team, right? If one rider can hold, you know, 50K an hour for one minute, but another rider can only hold that for 30 seconds, you wanna be able to maximize that speed and maximize each rider's potential. So some riders might be taking pulls as long as two minutes, Another rider might be taking pulls only as short as 30 seconds. Other riders might be sitting on for two or three rotations before they come through. They've got to work all of that out today, right? And once they work that out, and once they get that cohesion, that's what creates the fastest potential speed.